Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a quick look at tranching in securitization. For FRM candidates, my example follows from Philip Jorian in the FRM handbook. And I wanted to convey two ideas here. First is the tranching of the liabilities. Yesterday, I said this is one of the key characteristics or defining ingredients in a securitization. And that is to say, in a securitization, if we have a special purpose entity or vehicle, which I'm not really showing here, imagine them in the middle here somewhere, that special purpose entity is taking the cash flow generated by the collateral, the collateral being the credit sensitive assets, and dividing that into different tranches by issuing different classes of bonds. As we look at the structure, these may also be called loss layers. So it's these tranching into liabilities that is an essential ingredient in the securitization. And the special purpose entity is issuing asset-backed securities to the investors. So these investors then hold that paper. And that paper is a claim against the cash flow generated by the collateral. And the second idea is what I really want to focus on, which is the preservation principle that Jorian talks about. And that is to say that if we think about the collateral on the left, these are the assets generating cash flow, and the notes, the asset-backed securities that are issued to investors, if we think about those on the right, it's like a balance sheet in the sense that the total value cash flow and risk must be preserved. If this is a pie, then this is a pie also, and they have to equal each other in total. My point is only in total. The different securities will have different profiles. That's the whole point of the securitization. But if we roll them all up into one, there needs to be the preservation. And so we can use that fact. And let's first look at the preservation of the cash flow. Following Jorian's assumption here, our collateral is a 100 is 100 million par or notional, paying a fixed rate of six percent. So this is like holding a fixed coupon bond, paying six percent. That means the special purpose entity or vehicle is receiving, let's say, six million dollars per year. That means that's all that it can pay out, and the design of these tranches should be such that if we forget for a moment any leakage, the design of this of these tranches should be that the six million coming in is exactly paid out to the investors in total cumulatively. And so to take Jorian's example here, again a very simple structure where there's only two tranches a more realistic structure would have a dozen or more tranches. Here, we'll just have a senior, senior tranche and a junior tranche. Our senior tranche has a par of 50 million. Our junior tranche has a par of 50 million. That's the first preser preservation right there. Market value of 100 million has been preserved because total market value here on the right also equals 100 million. Now, the senior note or bond class issued to investors is going to pay LIBOR. L here represents LIBOR. So it's a floating coupon liability issued to those investors. The junior note will soon find out almost must be this, and that is to say it's an inverse floater paying 12% minus LIBOR. Also on the 50. And now let's look at how cash flow is preserved. What is this special purpose entity paying out to investors? Well, if this is all annualized, if LIBOR here is 6%, I've got that in yellow because it can change. If LIBOR is 6%, then the senior investor is going to get LIBOR 6% times 50 million. And so that's straightforward. The special purpose entity pays 3 million to senior investors and to the junior investors. It pays 12% minus LIBOR, so that's going to be 6% also, times the 50 million par, or 3 million. And so on the inverse note, inverse floater, there's also a payment to investors of 3 million. And notice, at least for this LIBOR, cash flow has been preserved. 6 million coming in matches 6 million going out. If I change LIBOR to 
let's say 9%, it turns out we're still paying out in total 6 million. If I change it down to 5%, it's the same story. By design, the cash flows are being preserved. And that's because if we can look at this and the total payment here is LIBOR on the 50 plus 12% minus LIBOR on this 50. LIBOR plus 12% minus LIBOR and the LIBORs cancel. So really in total we're left with only 12% on 50 which is the same as 6% on 100. So by design here, you can see by design, the preservation of cash flow principle has been met. These liabilities will always be uh, exactly funded by the incoming cash flow. And so now we get to the maybe more interesting part, and that is the preservation of risk, where our measure of risk is going to, as usual, be duration, the first derivative linear measure of sensitivity that's an approximation following Jorian, I'll assume our collateral has a duration of 4.5. Recall that means for approximately a 1% change in interest rates, a parallel shift, the value of the collateral will approximately change 4.5%. Now that's the duration. That could be the uh, Macaulay duration or the modified duration. We really want the dollar duration which is our duration of 4.5 multiplied by our 100 million. So there's a dollar duration of 450 million on the collateral. And so the preservation principle means that if this is the total risk of our assets, then the total risk of our liabilities must match. Well, what's the duration of our senior tranche? It's a floating coupon bond that pays LIBOR. This is a separate topic, but for now we'll just say that a floating coupon bond has a duration pretty close to zero, especially when the coupon resets. So with a duration of zero, that means the dollar duration of the senior liability here or senior tranche is zero. What does that mean? I'll start here from scratch. That means that the dollar duration of the junior tranche must bear the full burden of the risk. It must be equal to 450 million. That's because we need to have 450 million in total dollar duration here on the right. If the dollar duration of this junior tranche is 450 million, that means I can take the 450 million, divide by the 50 million, and that means that the duration of this junior tranche is 9, which is in fact, if these are five, if these are all five-year obligations, is greater than the five-year maturity. But that's okay. This is a measure of sensitivity. This inverse floater has a high duration. So let me show you one more example. And that is, let's take the same collateral, and this time, let's issue a 10% coupon to the senior investors and a 2% coupon to the junior investors. So you can see, again, we're going to be preserving the cash flow. We're going to pay $5 million on to the senior note holders and $1 million to the junior note holders, which equals $6 million in outgoing cash flow. And now we want to calculate the duration. And I'm just going to assume that the duration on the senior notes has a four, is 4.2. It's probably pretty close. That means the dollar duration here is 4.2 times 50 or 210. And that means if I want to preserve the total duration, I'm going to need to have a dollar duration on the junior tranche of 240 million. See how I solved for this because I need the sum of them to preserve the dollar duration. Well, if the dollar duration of my junior tranche is 240 million, I can take the 240 million divided into 50. And that means the implied duration on my junior tranche is 4.8. And so I have preserved, I've demonstrated the preservation of risk principle. And intuitively, this looks about right. My higher coupon, a higher coupon, uh, all of the things being equal, is going to have a lower duration. And my lower coupon is going to have a higher duration. But you can see we've illustrated our two principles. First, that there is a tranching in the securitization, and secondly, that we've preserved three things. The market value, the cash flows, and the risk, as here measured by dollar duration. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.